this presentation we're looking at isolating valves and as the name indicates an isolating valve is an appurtenance that is in a line that you could either isolate or shut off water or liquid flow to a certain area you may need to do this for maintenance purposes or just if you want to go away for a weekend and you don't want the water flowing to a whole area during that time period. So the ones we're looking at today are the gate valves, stop cocks, valve cocks and angle valves. The first one we're looking at there are the gate valves then and you can see on the left hand side there are three different ones and just by looking at them they look different. The one totally on the left hand side is the SABS compliant one and obviously the more reliable and the most expensive one of the two. Now if you have two next to each other over and above the SABS mark on it, the way to identify it quickly is by that section that I've just marked there. It's longer and that is called the stem or the bonnet area. That spindle there is a non-blowout spindle, so even if something goes wrong, the spindle can't come out altogether and cause the valve to mal malfunction. The second one then is the non-SABS one, which is the cheaper one, which you would normally use in your agricultural installations. Now both the first two there the 1001 and the 1002 have got female threaded ends, BSB threaded, and are suitable for connections to galvanized pipe or any other pipe with an adapter fitted onto it. The third one in the line there, you can see the ends are different. It's got a compression fitting on it, so that is ideally suited for working on copper piping. The third one, you'll see that that bonnet or stem area is also long and yes, it is also a SABS compliant product. All our gate valves are full bore and if you have a look at the picture on the right hand side, once the gate has been lifted to the open position, the whole hole is open. There's nothing that hangs out the bottom. So the whole bore of the pipe opens up then for water flow, which is a good idea there. So there you can see that section marked on the right hand side there. That's the whole section where the pipe would be in. Once the gate is open, that is open to flow and it is a full bore. The next one are the stopcocks. We have got totally left hand side as your heavy pattern one. You can see it's the bigger, bulkier one, and obviously your porting on the inside is bigger and allows for more water flow and is suitable especially for low pressure water. The one next to it is your light pattern and you can see the whole body is smaller and obviously your porting is smaller on the inside and can easily be used on a high pressure installation. Then also we have the compression ended one. So if you are going to be using copper piping or uh, multi-layer piping, that would fit directly into there and you don't need another adapter to connect it then to the thread. On the right hand side one we've got one that looks like the handle has been lost and that is what we call a loose key stopcock. You can remove the key so that people cannot tamper or fiddle with the water settings that you have or if you have got it shut off they can't open it up and cause water to waste there. We also have a selection of ball cocks. We have got the SABS one on the left hand side and that's got the stainless steel handle non DZR or it's a DZR body with a ball on the inside which is also DZR so fully compliant SABS next to it we've got 
the one that has got a steel handle nickel plated the body is exactly the same but it is non SABS due to the fact we've made it a little bit inexpensive there by taking the cost of a stainless steel handle out and going to a nickel plated handle the next one is we've left the nickel plating off the body of the tap or of the stopcock altogether and so that is a plain brass one now some people prefer the plain brass some people pref prefer the chrome plated or the nickel plated ones the strength of the body is exactly the same next to that we've got the little thumb cock it's only available in the 15 millimeter and it's ideal for under basins at toilet systems where you just want something small where you can just isolate the water to that area the right hand side one again we've got one that the handle has been removed it comes standard without a handle like that and is typically used in the municipal areas they have a key that would then fit on there which they can then shut off open and close the water now in Borcox once again as you can see on the picture there you have a full ball Borcox and a reduced ball now ours are all full ball type so once the ball is in the open position you can have a full flow of water through there this is good because there's nothing to cause restrictions get wire draw and worn wear out in there it is a complete open flow there one that people don't op often think of as a isolating valve is an angle valve but yes it is in line from there it goes to a tap or a mixer and it is not a flow control valve as such it is an isolating or a service valve so the idea there is to be able to isolate the water to a area or to a tap so that you can do maintenance on it while the rest of the house or the installation has still got live water to it it just makes maintenance that much easier the two on the outside one with a black handle and the new one with a chrome handle those can be used as flow controllers because they have got a very fine thread to be able to reduce the flow to a area say you've got a small basin and you don't want water splashing over the edge you can reduce the flow then <clears throat> it makes use of a rubber seat in there so you're not going to get wire drawing like the center one is a metal to metal seat the outside two is a rubber to brass seat there well i hope that that has answered your questions about isolating valves if you do have any more questions or uncertain about something you're welcome to contact me my details are on the screen and you're welcome to text me or phone me at any stage without further ado then i thank you for your attendance and participation in this presentation and i hope you enjoy the rest of the day